everyone, it's Chantal from Fusion. I'm back with another virtual environmental design class for you guys. So in the previous weeks, we've talked about architecture and graphic design. So if you have yet to see these videos, they are on our YouTube channel at Youth Fusion. So today I have the pleasure of telling you guys about the profession of an urban planner. So have you ever questioned the environment around you? All these buildings, roads, and shops? Have you ever left your house for school in the morning and asked yourself, why are the roads so wide? Or why are they so narrow? Or why isn't the sidewalk bigger? Why are the buildings so tall? Why is there a park here? Why is there a shop here and not there? Well, if you've asked yourself any of these questions, you're already thinking about urban planning issues. So today I have the pleasure of telling you guys about this very important profession. So we're going to start the video off by talking about the layout of cities and spaces in general. Then we're going to dive into the urban planning profession and the tools that urban planners use. Then we are going to talk about how to become an urban planner and how to work in this field. Then we're going to just talk about another profession that's kind of related to urban planning called urban design. Then towards the end of the video, we're going to talk about citizens' actions in urban planning and do a quick little exercise together uh, concerning urban planning. So sit tight. Uh, this is going to be a great video. Get comfortable and let's get started. First of all, what is a city? Well, you probably already know where this city is because you either live there or have been there before. So a city is both a physical and a human environment. It is essentially a territory, but also a population. So there are many aspects that characterize a city. You can have a bunch of housing units in a very small area that host people. You can have communication and transportation infrastructure, large office buildings, parks, and more. But also in a city, you have a lot of human activities. So you have like trade, politics, industry, education, sports, and culture. So the city promotes social, economic, and cultural exchanges, but not all cities are the same. They differ depending on the time they were built, their history, their climates, and their populations. Also, neighborhoods within a city differ depending on their urban infrastructure and the way that the buildings were built. After the Industrial Revolution, cities grew in size and number. This is called urbanization. In Canada, four out of every five people live in cities. This is 80% of the population. In order to be considered an urban area, a place needs to have at least 1,000 inhabitants. So in Quebec, the most populous cities are Montreal, Quebec City, Laval, Gatineau, and Longueuil. And within Canada, the most populous cities are Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Ottawa, and Edmonton. However, the growth of cities does have its drawbacks, such as rising violence and poverty, the lack of housing, health problems, air, soil, and water pollution, and massive waste production. So urbanization creates new needs. So cities need to constantly be adapting themselves to changing factors, such as the economy and public health. So this is what planners and urban planning professionals focus on in their work. Urban planning can be defined as the art of urban or rural space. It's a set of practices uh, for distributing and organizing space uh, within a given territory, um, its population, its social and economic activities, as well as equipment and means of communication. So, for example, urban planners are the ones who decide where certain facilities go within the city, such as parks, roads, public buildings, residential buildings, and even shopping malls. So, in their work, urban planners seek to harmonize these activities in a territory in order to improve social relations, economic prosperity, and sustainable development. So, I'll give you some examples of tools urban planners use, just so you guys understand this a little bit better. So most cities have an urban plan. It is a set of regulations that sets guidelines for a city's development and reflects the overall vision for the territory. It is also used as a management tool that allows municipal authorities to ensure consistency and in intervention choices, such as housing, transportation, environmental protection, and municipal equipment. So in some cities, activities are very well separated. So in one area, you might have a bunch of houses. In another area, you might have a bunch of shops. And in another area, you might have a bunch of industry. So in urban planning, this is called zoning. It's a tool for regulating and controlling land use. 
So for example, I can buy residential land, but I can't build a chocolate factory uh, in this residential area. Like, it has the potential uh, of harming the residents through my increased amount of delivery trucks or the noise and pollution coming from my factory. <laughs> so unlike zoning, uh, you might find some places where you see a mixture of houses or different kinds of shops. This is called diversity. So diversity allows for a mixture of different activities in a given area, whether it be places for living, for buying, for working, or for play. So this allows for a more complete and more pleasant living environment. In Quebec, the title of an urban planner is reserved for those who are part of the Quebec Urban Order. So there are several um, universities that offer bachelor's or master's degrees in urban planning or land use planning where they could get this title. Training is also offered at the SAGEP level in planning technologies and urban planning, so people who study there can also work in this field. Urban design involves creating a sense of place within cities. It takes into consideration the relationships between its people and its places. It questions how we move and interact with others within the city's landscape. It is essentially about creating and designing places within our city, uh, such as the buildings, uh, the public squares, the public transport systems, and more. And it's also about how we arrange these features uh, within the city. So not only do we want these features to be functional, but we want them to be attractive as well. However, sustainability comes into question when creating these lively spaces. We must take into consideration the environment, its population, and the costs of construction. So the main responsibilities of an urban planner consist of estimating the costs and timeline for a project, finding spaces to create designs within existing places within the city, as well as interacting with the community and discussing the wants and needs of citizens within the city. So now you may be asking, well, what's the difference between an urban planner and an urban designer? Well, an urban planner tends to focus on the structures, the strategies, and the policies within uh, building a city, while an urban designer focuses on the creating the features and the systems between people and the built environment. So for example, we could look at zones. So an urban planner is in charge of creating zones such as residential, commercial, and industrial. And an urban designer would create the features within these zones, such as bike paths, public squares, and parks. But both of these professions are really important when it comes to building our cities. So now let's make a connection between these professions and our environmental design program. So urban planning, urban design, and environmental design all have to take into account the three pillars of sustainable development. So we have the environmental, the social, and the economical. So firstly, we need to take into account the current environmental conditions um, within our environment before building a project. Then we have to take into account the people that live um, at the location of the project, their opinions and how the project may impact them. And lastly, we need to take into account the cost of the project and make sure not to go over budget. It is tactical urban planning that proposes temporary development with easy to install features to propose a change to a development within a street or an intersection or a public space. So very often, tactical urban planning reflects the citizens and they want to contribute to the development of their living space. So whether this be for a few hours, a day, a week, or a few weeks, this feature really transforms and energizes the public space. Our first example of tactical urban planning uh, is a movement that's gained popularity in recent years known as Parking Day. So this means pretty much occupying parking spaces for other than parking for a few hours at a time. So you can find this in dozens of cities around the world. So Parking Day pretty much is a global movement that wants us to think differently about parking in cities, but also brings into light mobility and travel within a city. So my coworker Lunes uh, in Quebec City was a part of one of these movements uh, last summer, and pretty much they occupied this parking lot, but with seating and a mini library. So people walking by could just pass by and sit down and enjoy their day in a parking lot. 
So finally, if you wander the streets of Montreal, you might find a green alley. So these are spaces that are created collectively by a community to bring more green spaces um, into their lives. So you, these could increase air quality and improve biodiversity as we seen last week. However, they also limit the amount of vehicle traffic in these alleys to not only create a safe space for the plants to grow, but also create a safe place for you to play, to bike, and to walk. So these green alleys allow for a community to come together to create something beautiful and create a sense of belonging. Okay, so now it's time for the activity part of our video. So today what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to be going outside and you're going to be taking three pictures of three different buildings in your community. So the first one is going to be one that you like and you want to keep. The second one is going to be one that you find that can look prettier so you want to renovate it. And then the third one is going to be one that you want to destroy. So is it clear? Yeah? Okay, great. So um, my coworker Lunes went out in his neighborhood. So he lives in Quebec in the neighborhood of Saint Jean Baptiste. So it's a pretty old community over there. So what he did is he went outside and took three pictures for us that I'm going to present to you guys today. So to start things off, I'm going to talk about Lunes's favorite house, the one that he loves. So he says that it's his favorite house in the neighborhood because he loves all of the wooden windows. He finds that it really enhances the exterior appearance of the house. Uh, in addition, he finds that the wood gives a really good environmental quality to the house. Uh, he thinks that the house is very bright and very airy and that the facade's also very beautiful. He also loves the enclosed balcony on the first floor. It just gives this particular shape to the house that prevents it from seeing it just as one uniform block. He also finds the color very well chosen and that gives just such a beautiful harmony to the building. So here is Lunes's second house. It's the one that he wants to keep but just do some renovations. He finds this a little beautiful house and there's a lot of them like that in his neighborhood but he thinks that it deserves a little bit more love. First of all there's the rusty tin roof. He also wants to change the windows just to put some more modern ones in but that also fits the bricks on the facade. He loves the bricks on the facade and he would definitely keep those. So finally here is the third house that Lunes picked for this activity. This is the house he wants to destroy. That is, he finds it just does not fit well within the landscape or the architectural style of the neighborhood. The construction looks fairly recent, and in his opinion, he would rather that this more modern style be included in a more modern neighborhood. The facade is made out of wood and partially made out of brick, and he finds that the materials just don't fit well together. Also, he finds that the small entrance that leads onto the sidewalk is just not very nice. And finally, he thinks that the windows are really small and that the house could have more windows. That's your challenge for this week. So go outside if possible and walk around your neighborhood and find these three buildings. And don't forget to take some pictures for us because we always love to see your hard work. So this is already the end of our video. It was such a good time presenting you guys these professions as well as many of these citizens' actions concerning urban planning. So if you guys want, you can always go back on previous parts of the videos that you missed and have a beautiful day and a beautiful week and see you next time. Bye guys.